Hello, my lovely listeners. I'm Dr. Mary Barson. And I'm Dr. Lucy Burns. Welcome to this episode of Real Health Health and and Weight Loss. Good morning, gorgeous ones. It's Dr. Lucy here. And today I am, of course, joined by the beautiful, evanescent, highly competent, wonderful Dr. Mary. (laughs) Uh, As we chat today about one of our favorite topics of weight loss. It is a favorite topic. There are so many facets to weight loss. The more I the more I think about weight loss, the the more I dive into this world, the more and more layers and layers open up like this never-ending like lotus flowers, all of these layers to what at the surface might seem really simple. Mm. And in fact, people make it simple by saying just go and lose weight. And I, I mean, everybody does. Doctors do. Doctors are great at it. It's like, oh, Mrs. Blah, blah, you know, you've got some blood pressure. Well, if you just lost some weight, you know, you can probably be fine. And it's like, hmm. Why didn't I think of that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I would love to know how many people have ever heard that phrase. If you just, or if you just lost some weight, or the alternate one is, have you thought about losing some weight? So, <laughs> That's right. Every second of every day. Yes, gaslighting. Gaslighting by doctors, by community, and uh, a healthy dollop of victim blaming is one of those very important layers to weight loss. All right, so Dr. Lucy, you and I spend a lot of time thinking, talking about weight loss, about empowering people to lose weight. And I would say that we are not your average weight loss doctors. We've got, I think, somewhat unique opinions on weight loss. And if not unique, I would certainly say very well-rounded, very holistic and very health-focused instead of weight-focused. Tell us your take on weight loss. Oh, absolutely, Mez. It's one of my favourite topics because it's very polarising and for good reason. The word weight loss is actually wrong. Like it's not even true what we're actually trying to describe. It's actually fat loss. Like again, if you're just losing weight, let's just, that basically is looking at the number on the scales and the idea is it has to be lower than it was previously. That's weight loss. You weigh less than you used to. However, it really, I would love it to be called fat loss, but it just doesn't seem to be taking off. What has happened though is that you and I both look at weight loss as a means to becoming healthy. And in fact, it would be the other way around. We look at becoming healthy as a means to losing weight. Whereas lots of other places, programs, plans, all of those things, it's the focus is entirely on losing weight to be smaller. Like it's all about, and you'll hear that, you'll see the messaging. It's all about imagine how you'll feel when you can slip into a slinky dress or imagine how you feel when you're wearing your bathers confidently bathers being swimming costume for those of us who speak different dialects of English. Imagine how you'll feel. And it's all about this being thinner or smaller. And that's all it is. Mm. Nothing tastes as good as thin feels. Absolutely. And the the thing about these imaginings, they do, they, they ask you to visualize, is that they're they're very tantalizing. Like they really you do, you start to imagine how you'll feel in the smaller clothes. But here's the thing, you don't have to wait until you're in the smaller clothes to feel good about yourself. And in fact, we would say that you need to start that first, that you cannot berate yourself thin and you cannot hate yourself well. If you're waiting to arrive at this thin point you'll be you'll be sorely disappointed 
because, and you know, and, and I can hear, I can already hear people going, no, 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 I won't. I'll feel so much better about myself when I'm thinner. And it's like, okay, all right, let's play that game. When you were 20 or 15 or 17, most of us weighed less than we do now. And were we happy with ourselves? And I certainly wasn't. That's, you know, if you listen to the last couple of episodes, that's when I started my dieting career because I thought I was too heavy, too big, too fat, too something. And so many of us will look back on photos and go, oh, I wish I was as thin now as I was then. So we're never satisfied. And that's not our fault. That's because we've been led to believe that unless we're a certain height, shape, shoe size, whatever it is, that we're somehow unacceptable. So I would say that we do not believe in weight loss so that you are acceptable. You are already acceptable. I have disliked my body when it's been heavier, disliked my body when it's been lighter. I don't dislike my body anymore. We want people to love themselves or at least learn to like themselves prior to loving yourself because not only is this a nicer place to live your life, it also literally helps you get and stay physically well. It's a really important part of the process to physical health and to well-rounded wellness. That is what we want for people. And weight loss is a beautiful side effect to great physical health and well-rounded wellness. But the reason we want people to be well is that so that you can do the best that you can with this one precious life for this one trip that you get on this earth. We want you to do the most with it. We want you to be able to chase your dreams and and not be shackled by food addiction, not be shackled by metabolic disease, to be able to break free from those chains and just live your best life. And if you're living your best life, you know, in a heavier body than perhaps society might deem ideal, it doesn't really matter as long as you're living your life in the healthiest body that you can create. Absolutely. And I just totally love that because it is, you don't need to be a perfect size eight or two if you're American or zero or whatever it is. And in fact, there is plenty of evidence now to say that that being too thin, (laughs) we already know this, but being too thin is harmful. And we see that plenty of illness comes from people not looking after themselves at the other extreme. So, you know, they, they don't eat enough. They don't uh, sleep enough. They smoke to avoid food. They drink 200 cups of coffee to avoid food. So there is plenty of evidence that avoiding food is harmful to our health. So for us, we really look at going, okay, all right, so we accept that there are people out there, and I'm actually going to say there are plenty of people out there for whom losing weight would end up resulting in them having greater capacity to live their life on their terms. So greater capacity for their physical health, greater capacity for their mental health for multiple reasons. And, you know, we talk a lot about the physiology. And there is undeniably physiological changes that happen as we gain more and more weight. So we can reverse those. And it's about not, not weight loss at any cost. So I was telling a little story the other day that if we wanted to use weight loss as an analogy to saving money, so let's say you come up with an aim, you want to, you know, people will, they always do this. What's your weight loss goal? Oh, I want to lose, you know, 40 pounds or I want to lose 15 kilos. Okay, same. So you might have a savings goal. I want to save $10,000. Oh, that's lovely. Awesome. And so if you're purely focused on the goal of saving $10,000 and you don't care how you do it, You could be tempted to steal money from a shop. You could be tempted to rip off an old lady, one of my favourite sayings. You could be tempted to start an internet scam. If all your goal is is to save the 10 grand, then you don't care how you do it. 
And it can be the same for weight loss where people, all they're interested in in the goal and they don't care how they do it. But I can tell you the process matters. It absolutely matters because if you don't care how you do it, you can actually do your body irreparable harm to your metabolic rate by dieting, and I'm using the air quotes, I know you can't see them, in a way that is harmful and punitive and, you know, involves enormous amounts of deprivation. And it doesn't have to be like that. Like it absolutely doesn't. Yeah, diet culture, it can damage your body and it can also damage your brain. It can be really psychologically traumatic when you're caught in the diet roller coaster, restricting your caloric intake, losing weight at the expense of your metabolic rate, then having your metabolic rate lowered so that when you go back to eating a normal amount of food, you put all the weight back on plus more and being caught in this hideous yo-yo is damaging to your mind, body and spirit. So it isn't safe and we do not, do not comply to the weight loss at any cost philosophy. Absolutely not. And, I mean, you just mentioned calorie calorie restriction. It makes, you know, there is a big difference between forced calorie restriction, i.e. I'm doing a 800-calorie-a-day diet, for example, compared to the natural calorie deficit that can occur once you learn to really tune into your hunger and satiety. So some people will say to us, oh, well, I am eating less calories because, you know, I'm, I'm now not hungry. It's like, oh, hooray. Well, that just happened. That's just celebrate that. That's, like, That's wonderful. It's not forced. Like when you forced calorie and oh God, I've done this so many times where I've actually been hungry, like physiologically hungry, hungry. I've run out of points or calories or whatever it was I was counting for the day. And it's like, I've got nothing. I can't do anything. So my brain is, my brain wants me to eat because it's literally saying, you need fuel, Lucy. And I'm going, oh, but I can't. So, you know, I went to bed. Like, what else could I do? I went to bed. It's like at six o'clock because I couldn't think of anything else to do because some external meal plan told me that I was only allowed to have this amount of food. Permanent weight loss is much more than a meal plan. We get a lot of people wanting us to to give them meal plans, done for you meal plans. Why don't we? Because, well, here's the hilarious thing, right? Even recipe books, like we do provide lots of recipes that are not written by us because we're not chefs. But a beautiful company, Thermo Foodie and the Chef, provide recipe books, which we say you can use these as a guide. And the reason that you use them as a guide is that most recipes have serving sizes. Now, here's the thing. How does a serving size work when you're looking at a person who might be 20 years old, 5 foot 2 and weigh 45 kilos, or a person who's 45, weighs 100 kilos and is a bricklayer and has a physical job? Versus someone who's 60, works in a desk, 5 foot 11, weighs 100 pounds. I think they might be a bit small. Maybe they weigh 150 pounds. <laughs> how do all of those, how, how, what's their serving size? So how do serving sizes actually work? They don't. They're a guide. But this is where we, again, we've given our agency, we've become so out of touch with our own physiology, our own hunger cues, our own satiety signaling that we don't know how much to eat. We literally don't. And everyone goes, I need to reduce my portion sizes. It's interesting, isn't it, that that's been the focus. And you think, hmm, what's going on there? What what do you mean? You know, we spend a lot of time and, and it's really scary. I'm going to say it can be a bit scary for some people at first because the usual diet plan involves a shopping list, a meal plan, and they know what to expect. And brains love to know that. Brains do love to know what's coming up. It feels safe if you know the plan. And we go to people, you know what? I mean, look, there are a couple of meal plans 
available for those people who really aren't quite ready to let go of the training wheels, and that's fine. But the idea is that you get to go to a place that is so empowering because suddenly you reconnect with your own body and your mind and you learn to trust yourself again, trust your signaling. And you learn to know yourself well so that you know what foods, and there are certain foods that will override that natural signaling that we have. And those foods, for the majority of them, are processed foods. Some of them aren't because, you know, for me, it's blooming nuts. But if I take nuts out of the picture, the majority of them are processed foods or even low-carb but sweetened foods can override our natural signaling. You can get to a beautiful, empowered place where you're eating lovely, delicious healthy whole foods you're not depriving yourself you're not hungry you're healing your body you're healing your metabolism you're getting well getting empowered getting more energy and you are losing fat and it is achievable for everybody with the right tools and the right mindset management you can find this wonderful as we call it food freedom and when you've got food freedom, it's good for your brain and it's good for your body and weight loss is happening, but weight loss is not the focus. Well, at least it's not weight loss at any cost being the focus. This is our take on weight loss. It is holistic health, health in your mind, in your body, in your spirit, driven by low-carb real food, driven by the food that we eat, our diet, for want of a better word, is the driver and our mind, well, that's like the vehicle, the low-carb real food is the vehicle and our mind is the driver and learning how to drive this vehicle in a beautiful, healthy way results in weight loss, but it's almost a side note. I actually personally am far more interested in other metrics, so much so that I actually quite frequently forget to weigh my patients that come to me for weight loss because I can be so over the topedly excited by the fact that their fatty liver has gone away and that their HbA1c is normalized and their diabetes is in remission and that they're feeling really good. And for the first time in their life, they're no longer obsessing over food and they're no longer drinking wine to excess to numb, you know, the emotional pain of something. All of these beautiful things are happening. And yes, they're losing weight and that's great, but I'm far more excited by everything else that is going on for them. Oh, I know. I know. It is super exciting. And I think, you know, people at the end of the day, when you eat real food, when you are able to work through the other reasons why you may have eaten in the past, particularly, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about emotional eating, eating to numb, eating to soothe, eating to celebrate, eating to manage emotions. When you get to a, a place of peace in your mind with that, you feel better. As you know, we chat to lots of our members and people doing our 12-week mind-body rebalance. We chat to them all the time. And for so many of them, I, you know, I'll often say, so, you know, what prompted you to join? And they, in the end, they'll often say, I was just sick and tired of being sick and tired. And the amount of energy people have experience when they're not on the sugar roller coaster, they're not getting the highs, they're not getting the lows. They just have this beautiful, steady supply of fuel that is coming from their stored fat. It's just, it's so wonderful to see that they're, they're living their lives again. Yep. They're empowered to be well and chase their dreams. Absolutely. So, lovelies, of course, you know, we've mentioned about our 12-week mind-body rebalance. It is starting Starts on the 11th of February is our kickoff day. We start with a welcome party. It is a fantastic program. It has content every week. You get a new set of videos, which you can watch at your own pace. 
They're easy, they're bite-sized. You can listen to them on your walk, you can listen to them in the car, or you can sit down and watch them if that's your preferred method. We have a live coaching call every week. In fact, we have two to accommodate our two time zones because gorgeous Americans who are listening, we have a large following from North America. We actually have a large following from Europe and England as well. So hello to all of you. And so I guess we have an international flavor. So we do offer two time slots for our coaching calls. They're all, of course, recorded. So if you did miss one because you had something way more exciting than listening to Dr. Mary or myself, you can watch the recording. And each week we have a hypnosis that goes because we know that, look, advertising works because it repeats the message over and over and over again until it's buried deep into your subconscious. Hypnosis works the same way. The more you listen to them, the more they're in there and they will counter industry messaging that is trying to take you off your path. So it is truly a holistic program. It includes, as I said, dozens of recipe books and meal plans for those people that do want them at the start. And I guess for us, what we give you, we give you your power back. We give you agency. You become the drivers of your all-terrain vehicle that will keep you on your path of good health with a sprinkling of weight loss. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So if you'd like more information about our 12-week Mind Body Rebalance Program, do head over to our website, www.rlmedicine.com, and you will find our program there. Absolutely. And if you can't remember it, the uh, link is in the show notes below. So gorgeous ones, have a beautiful week, and uh, we'll see you next week with more episodes of Real Health and Weight Loss. Bye, beautiful ones. So, my lovely listeners, that ends this episode of Real Health and Weight Loss. I'm Dr. Lucy Burns. And I'm Dr. Mary Barson. We're from Real Life Medicine. To contact us, please visit rlmedicine.com. And until next time, thanks thanks for for listening. listening. The information shared on the Real Health and Weight Loss podcast, including show notes and links, provides general information only. It is not a substitute, nor is it intended to provide individualized medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor can it be construed as such. Please consult your doctor for any medical concerns.